so do you want to transition over quickly to head coaching candidates that that may be filling in for him? Yeah, got a quick article up that I wrote last night and and uh, put that up today with some head coaching candidates of who they they might have. So they can go internal. They could go internal. I'm a big fan of internal. I want internal. I will. Okay, so I'm going to list three internal names and then I'll just have you explain. Can I guess who they are? Part. Yeah, go ahead. Brian Haynes, Mike Shanahan, and Tino Sinceri. Those are the three internal names. Go ahead. Give me your thoughts on why they should stay internal. I think they should stay internal because – to me, this is a really a spot in JMU football history. Maybe I'm overreacting, but if Signetti leaves, you may have a, a big thing in roster turnover. Uh, you, you change a lot. You might change your identity, all of these things. I think if you stay internal, you have a better shot at keeping a large portion of your recruiting class that's coming in, and you have a large, you have a good chance of keeping a lot of the guys on the roster, namely Jalen Walker, Aiden Fisher, Mikel Kamara, Jordan McLeod, uh, Reggie, I think Reggie's graduate, Elijah Surratt, like these, these big time players we just came to love can easily leave and go to Indiana and follow Signetti or go to another school, a potential power five school. But if you keep it internal, you keep, you, you try to keep that coaching staff together because we were talking last podcast about how great this coaching staff is. I think I posed the question to you about, uh, would you rather lose Signetti and keep the coaching staff or lose the coaching staff and keep Signetti? And I believe we both kind of said, in a perfect world, would love to not love, would much rather keep the coaching staff if if Signetti left. And I think that you have a you have a all right chance of doing that if you do an internal hire. Yes. I think the one thing that's really important because fans get this confused a lot where they're like, I hope they bring in a new guy, but keep the staff. That's not how anything works. Like that's no, you, you cannot this staff, if you don't internally hire, will most yes. likely and and I will say Mike Shanahan and Bryant Haynes the fantastic defensive coordinator and the fantastic offensive coordinator, both of which I think would be great hires if you brought them up internally, have been with Signetti since his Division II days at IUP. So, like, he brings guys with him. Robo, the offensive line coach, has been with him at E. Like, he comes with them. Uh, quickly here, we have Brad B., IU grad here, searched Kurt Signetti, and you guys popped up. What are some pros and cons? Um, I will quickly go over it. Pros. He's a fantastic program builder. He knows how to hire good coaches. He's more of a CEO type. He's going to really identify good talent, both coaching wise and uh, student wise. He's a, it seems like a QB whisperer almost. Maybe that's Mike Shanahan too. And that kind of dual punch, uh, all of that cons is that he's old. Um, he's a little conservative. He likes to turtle all of that stuff in game stuff, but I mean, he's built program after program, and he has a track record of success. I, I think this is a home run hire for Indiana. Great hire, yeah. I hope you like first down runs, but uh, I think he hey, not a, not after the bye week, baby. Uh, that's true. <laughs> but um, okay, so coaching candidates, I think it's Shanahan. I, in my mind, I think it goes Shanahan Haynes, and I don't think Sinceri will will get a look. It, I think it would QB be the head coach. I don't want. I'm not going to say it's malpractice. I think it would be stunning to go like into next year being like, we think we can make the college football playoff and our new head coach has only ever been a quarterback's coach. I, would, I can't see that happening. Here's here's a take, and let's workshop it. I have 15 minutes before my lunch break's over, but uh, Sinceri, hire, promote Bryant Haynes, the defensive coordinator. And this probably won't ever happen, but you promote Brian Haynes, you get Pat Koontz to be defensive coordinator, and Shanahan goes with Signetti, and Tino Sinceri becomes OC. I could see that. I think I would have Haynes um, as my one, and the Shanahan as my two. Um, but I think you can kind of kind of go either way with those two in terms of if you're going internal. Uh, yeah, if you go with Shanahan, right? I think Sinceri going to OC is certainly a possibility. Um, and then, so Tyler has a question here. Knowing how great Jeff Bourne is, do you think he could have seen this coming? What do you think the interim will be for the bowl game? Some rumors that maybe Cincinnati will even coach the bowl game. I don't know. For the seeing it coming, he's got a list at all times. I'm very sure. Him, the consulting firm they use, this is not like an unexpected move. They're very prepared. I would think they would have a hire like within a week. Another given... emergency pod will be coming. <laughs> it's going to be quick. It's going to be really quick just because you got early signing day on December 20th. You want to retain your players, right? Also, because the portal, I think, officially opens for for Tuesday. undergrad guys. Yeah, next week the fourth, right? So you've you've got to kind of move immediately because you'd like to retain your roster. And if you don't retain your roster, you need the new guy to start also going in the portal and grabbing some dudes. 
Yeah, I will say Daniel said this in, on Twitter, but thank goodness this happened while Jeff Bourne is here. What a lasting impact you can have on this program. But also a, a unique situation, right? Where the the new coach will coach his first football game with an I with an AD who didn't hire him. So it's going to yeah. be uh, it's, it's going to be a be. crazy few months. <laughs> okay, so some outside candidates. You you've been you've been nose to the grindstone figuring out some outside candidates. Heck yeah. Hit me with some with some outside candidates. I threw here's my funniest one first, just for entertainment value as some fans Mike are Houston. stressed during this time. I saw some Mike Houston stuff. Brandon Staley. <laughs> Virginia, DC. Let's say the Chargers fire him on Monday and we hire him the same day. How about that? That's also a perfect I like that one because it allowed me to make a stay tuned for Monday joke in the article. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, that one's not gonna happen. Um, a few names that I think would be big time outside. Bob Chesney at Holy Cross is a stud. Um, was toward the end, I think, with Syracuse. So coaching an FCS team right now, he's led them to a 28 and four record in league games. He's also won a bunch of games at the D2 and D3 levels. So kind of similar, similar to Signetti, but then also similar to Mike Houston, right? For that path of, of success at, at multiple levels. I think he'd be a great hire. I don't know. If he makes the most sense, given that like he's going to be coaching a power five soon. So you might have Bob Chesney for 2024. You guys win 10 games and then he does the same thing again. Um, Another one who I think deserves a ton of love, Joe Harrisimiak, Rutgers defensive coordinator, former main head coach who overlapped with Jamie during the CAA FCS days, led them to a 10 win season. Maine that is in 2018 as the head coach. Then he left because Maine has essentially no resources for football became a Minnesota assistant. He's now the the DC at Rutgers and has done a really nice job with them. They play some good defense. Both those guys, pretty young. I think Harris Simiak's like 37 and Chesney might be um, early to mid 40s. So you've got young guys who I think have great potential to be power five head coaches one day, could recruit well. They've proven they can win as head coaches. So I think there's some value there. Um, whereas Shanahan and Haynes and Sinceri obviously have, have not had a like a bunch of winning head coaching records. So those are a couple. Uh, and then a few I threw out that were just sort of interesting names. Willie Simmons at Florida A&M. He's 64 and 24 as head coach at Prairie View A&M and Florida A&M. Done a lot of good stuff with them. Uh, Jerry Mack is a Tennessee running back, running back coach who is a big time recruiter. He was the head coach at North Carolina Central from 2014 to 2017 and went 31 and 15. So Works for a P5 program, good recruiter, has head coaching experience, interesting. Uh, Drew Maringer gets mentioned every time JMU has an opening because he was the uh, co-offensive coordinator in 2014. Young guy who now is the Oregon's, Oregon tight ends coach. Um, wouldn't expect him to be like the favorite or anything, but he always seems to sort of get his, his name in the mix. Yeah. And uh, I threw Jay Hill in there on my list. The former Weber State head coach, now the DC at BYU. I think he spent his entire coaching career in Utah. So I don't expect this to happen because if you're trying to like kill recruiting in Virginia and North Carolina and the East coast, and you have somebody who like, like eats, sleeps, breathes like Utah in the West coast, I'm not <laughs> sure that makes the most sense, but won a ton of games there and is a very good coach. So those are some names. And then I threw Staley as a joke. Um, Brian Steinspring always gets mentioned. He's the head coach now at Roanoke college. I don't think that's a real possibility, but it's almost a guarantee that a former player will float his name at some point here in the next two days. Yeah. Isaac Steer asked, does Signetti take his coordinators and QB with him? Uh, he can, but it all depends on what the hiring here at JMU does um, because they can promote, the coordinators can stay. Right. It's more so kind of a dual thing of what Signetti wants to do and then what the new coach wants to do who is coming in. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I also don't know how the McLeod stuff works because I know some Indiana fans are asking about like the actual quarterback position. He's transferred a lot. Like, I don't know if he's out of potential transfers. Well, by now. Someone responded that when your coach leaves, you get a free year transfer. That's not a thing that okay, that's like they used to be, I was looking this up yesterday and the NCAA has a very specific thing that says that's not a free waiver. Okay. So you, you can, maybe if there's like a coach thing and a mental health thing that you could put to, I don't know. The waiver process is confusing, but I don't think it's one where you get a free I can transfer in addition to a one-time transfer because my coach leaves. Yeah, so uh, before we get up on out of here, I want you to get kind of give me a percentage chance of it uh, being an outside hire or an internal promotion. Gosh, that's a good question. I th- I'll let you answer first, sorry. I'll go. I'll say that they go 
60% outside, 40% inside. They've got some great assistance inside, which makes me think it's possible. I also would not be shocked if they wanted to roll with somebody who's like one as a head coach before, like they did with Signetti. That's a good point. Um, so if it's an outside hire, who's your who's your pick? Who do you think it'll be? I, it's such an impossible task because it's probably going to be some Division two coach we've never heard of. Uh, that, that's just the way it seems like they do it. But um, who do you think it'll be? If they get Chesney or Harrisimiak, I think that is like home run. You nailed it. Like they're young. They've won as head coaches. They have great experience. I think they could come in. And if you have them for multiple years, I think you'd be in an unbelievable spot. Um, a part of me, part of me kind of is coming around on the inside thing because maybe they could keep the recruiting class intact, keep the roster intact. You'd be darn good in 2024. Um, and if that doesn't work out, the new AD would have a pretty easy crux to be like, Hey, we're going to check. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing how that goes for two or three years. I think it's a 75, 25% chance. It's an internal. I'm pretty confident that this is going to be an internal hire. And that's really why I'm not too worried about this kind of the Oregon state mold of how they promoted Jonathan Smith, their defensive coordinator who had been there for a while and had really known the kind of culture and structure uh, that was built there at Oregon state. And a lot of their fans are excited about that. That kind of got me more excited about a potential internal hire. Uh, according to some reports, uh, Potential recruits may be more keen for an internal hire and would be less likely to flip. Uh, so there's sense. a lot of things that going into it, but I think an internal hire at this point in where JMU is, they have two stud coordinators. They have some great kind of position coaches. I, I would love an internal hire and trying to keep this staff as intact as possible. I see a lot in the comments that Frank Signet Frank Signetti Jr. is available. I, I don't want Frank Signetti Jr. He runs a He's not the best offensive coordinator when he was at Pitt. The guy who got fired from Pitt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I assume that's a joke, but <laughs> just I hope clear. it's a joke. I just hope to be clear, it's a joke. no. But uh, you know, like, I think JMU is slightly above Frank Signetti Jr. And that would be a downgrade between the Signetti brothers. Like a that a big time step down from that'd be that'd be Kurt really tough. To, Let me hit you with a couple of quick listener questions. All right. I gotta I gotta get out of here. My lunch break's I know, almost I know, over. I know, I know. Hit me quick. Daniel Merriman was asking how much roster turnover do you expect? There's a few other thing there's but what do you what do you think roster turnover wise you think it gets crazy here in the next couple days i don't think so I, I think they'll keep it together for the most part um don't be shocked though if like a jalen walker or an aiden fisher enter the portal um i think you i don't think we'll see too much recruiting change as of right now in terms of what the recruiting classes are coming ben hoffer you can follow him uh, on twitter recruiting uh duke's recruits uh, at Duke's Recruits on Twitter, he'll have kind of the updates over there. I think from a current roster standpoint, you'll see a few enter the transfer portal. Uh, so don't be shocked if they do. But I, I don't think there's going to be insane roster turnover. Also makes sense if you're a player to just wait like three days. And then yes. I think the hire is going to happen within the next 10 days. Oh, for, I think it'll be like within a week. I Because that's why Indiana fast. acted so fast. They, their, their athletic director wanted someone in place for Tuesday for the transfer portal and to get everyone – back together and essentially recruiting people. I would not be shocked if the hires made Monday. Yeah, I could, I could see it happening quite quickly. I saw another, a uh, couple of replies to the coaching candidate story. Bubba Fist asked if Mike London could be a possibility. I think that'd be underwhelming giving his terrible tenure at Virginia, even though he's been a really good FCS coach. And then somebody suggested Al Golden. Uh, I guess he's an assistant at Notre Dame now. I think he was at what Temple in Miami has had some, um, he could certainly be an interesting Interesting. Look, I kind of, I kind of think young, I think they go young this time. Um, sort of in that similar Houston vein where it's an internal hire, or if they can get a guy who's one, but is young, I think that'd be quite the play for them. Ben just put in the YouTube comment section. I just got word. Uh, coaches are contacting recruits. That's both JMU's current coordinators and other coaches. And that's normal. That's normal, man. That's how the, that's how the <laughs> yeah, sausage gets tell, made, I can man. Tell you try, you're trying to rationalize. No, I mean, that's just like how it is. Like it's a, it's a shady enterprise where it's it like all about money. It's not about student athletes, right? It's about just like, can I get the players to have my team win? Like, let's say JMU gets a, a coach from uh, some other school that had a few good players. The coach is going to try to steal them and bring them to JMU. And we're all going to be like, smart move. This guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not going to get that mad about that. JMU, whoever becomes the head coach is probably going to try to steal some people 
And if it's an internal hire, I think they, they lock in the class pretty well, do some stuff and then go grab some, uh, some transfers. I did find quick last note here, at least for me, I found it hilarious that an Indiana player entering the portal posted today that he got an offer from JMU and then had to clarify that he received it previously, uh, but only posted it today. I found that hilarious because Indiana fans were, were sort of in a, in a funk there for a second. Uh, do you think Travell Mullen transfers back to Indiana? That would be something if, if Mullen went back to Indiana. I'm going to be bummed if they lose some of the, the key guys on the roster, but like, I don't know. They've gone through this before, right? They've gone through it the uh, multiple times over the last decade and been pretty successful. Can I say a really pessimistic take before we get up on out of here? Yes. It feels like they've hit a home run higher uh, with Withers into Houston, <laughs> into, into Zignetti. Really feels like the time for a, just a whiff is coming. And uh, I don't think this program can afford a whiff right now. That'd be tough. But also, to also good thing that they've hit a home run with their last three yeah. hires. Gun to your head. Who's the coach? Uh, Bryant Haynes. Haynes makes a lot of sense to me. And then uh, Brian, if Brian they could Haynes keep Sanceri and or Shanahan with Haynes, that'd be very, very cool. If I think Shanahan, if he's not the promoter, I think he goes with Signetti. That's fair. I think Pat Kuntz, if they can keep Kuntz and Sanceri, that's awesome. I The staff is great if they could hang on to some of the staff. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, keep it locked to our Twitter, JMU Sports News, uh, our Instagram, same handle, and our website, www.jmusportsnews.com. We'll be hitting a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of content coming, a lot of stuff. Nova, we need Tino to stay. Jordan and a few others. Guy, that's true. Tino Sinceri has been a QB whisperer, uh, and his his impact has been it's been massive. Um, so. Keep it locked to all of the social feeds. This has been the Jamie Sports News Emergency Pod presented by Bet Online. A lot of stuff is going to be happening in the next seventy-two hours. Stay tuned for Monday because I think we'll we'll have a <laughs> I think I think we'll have a coach hire here very shortly. So Bennett, thanks for jumping on this emergency pod. It was fun. Great emergency pod. See you. We soon. Might have another one. We might have another one here soon.